Creating a good inventory system for your game can be a bit tricky, especially if you don't want to overcomplicate things and make it easily expandable. I have came up with this decent inventory system, we will be using scriptable objects to make the items, so that you can easily add as many items as you want. We will be able to pick up the items, drop them, some of the items will also be stackable, obviously we will be able to move them across the inventory grid, and also put them to the hotbar, so that we will be able to choose which weapon or item we want to be holding in our hand. We will start with a empty scene, I have also downloaded three packages. One is the Fantastic UI Starter Pack for the UI, then the Survival Melee Weapons Pack, which has four weapons, you will be able to find all of these packages in the description. And for the player controller, we are using the Realistic FPS Controller 3. In the scene I will create a 3D object plane, add the player controller, and because we don't need to use some stuff, I will just delete the items that he is holding in his hands. To do that, we'll need to unpack the prefab. Next, we'll begin by creating the simple UI. So right click in the hierarchy, go under UI, and we can begin by creating some background. So we can use panel for that. Switch mode to 2D. And just set the source image to some of the textures. So this will be our background. I will also create two empty objects. One will be for the inventory and the other one will be for the pod bar. So we have these two backgrounds. Also don't forget to set the canvas scale mode in the canvas to scale with screen size so that it looks same on all devices. Create two new game objects. One will be for the items and one for the slots. And we'll copy them to hot bar 2. So the structure of the inventory should look like this, and now under the slots object, we'll create the slots, so UI, image, drag some texture to the image, I like to use this green one. One quick tip, if you have many of these slots and you want to move them down, for example by 120, to the position Y, you can just type minus 120, and it will calculate you the new position. So now we have the basic inventory, and because we have it all under the inventory parent, we can just turn it on or off as we want. Also, don't forget to add the slots for the hotbar. Here I will set the scale of all of them to 0.9, because later we will be making the slot that we have selected bigger. This looks good enough. Now we will get to the coding, so I have created folder for the scripts and we will create a script inventory item, another one for inventory slot, inventory manager, item SO, which stands for the scriptable object. We will start by creating the scriptable object, so open the item script. We want it to derive from the scriptable objects instead of mono behavior. Create asset menu so that we can instantiate the items in our assets. We can delete the voids and we'll add some properties. Public string for the name, public sprite for the icon, public game object for the prefab of the item, and also public integer for the max size of the stack. Now we should be able to right click, create, scriptable objects and create instance for the item and for each item we should be able to set the name, icon, prefab and the max size of the stack. Here I have the icons that I made by myself and we just need to set the texture type to sprite 2D and UI. If you want to set the icon property of the hammer by dragging the sprite you want to lock the inspector, then you can open the icons and just drag it like that. Now we will do some coding in the inventory item script so that we can correctly show the item in the inventory based on the scriptable object that we assign to it. We will need to add using unitengine.ui because we will be changing the sprite of the item. Now make a public variable for the item scriptable object. 
and a serialized field variable, which will be for the image that we want to set. The reason that we are using serialized field is that we will be able to set the image in the inspector, but other scripts will not be able to change it. And in update, we can just say icon image dot sprite is equal and get the sprite from the item script table object. Just like that. Right now we don't actually have a prefab for the item, so we can just create empty object. And under it, we will add the icon, so just add UI and image. And we would also probably want to have some background, so just copy the image. And on the background, we can decrease the opacity. And also make sure that the background is actually in the background, so drag it over the icon like this. To the item parent, we obviously want to add the inventory item script and set the icon image. I will also make a prefab from the item because later we will need to instantiate it and we can put as many items as we want under the item's parent and set the item scriptable objects. Yeah, you can see that it is correctly displaying the item based on the scriptable object that we set here. Now let's jump to the inventory slot where we will just add a public variable for the item that it is currently holding. And to make it easier for us later, I will add a public void, which we'll call set health item. To the parameters, we'll have just a game object for the item. And what this will do is that at the same time, we'll be able to easily set the health item and also set its position to the slot. Because when we have some item and it is being held by the slot, we obviously want to set its position to this slot. This will make it that later in the inventory manager we don't need to be setting the health item and also setting its position, we can just call this void. Now we can get to the main part which is the inventory manager, so I will put it to the canvas and get into the script. Here I will add both using unityengine.ui because we will be changing some stuff with UI and using unityengine.eventSystems. This will allow us to get to know if we are actually clicking on some of the items. Next to the mono behavior, we'll implement two interfaces. One of them is i pointer down handler, and the other one is i pointer up handler. If you are not familiar with interfaces, you can also check one of my videos. So now we need to implement the on pointer down void. Don't forget to make it public. And we also need to implement the void on pointer up. Make sure that you have the pointer event data in the parameters. This is just some data about the pointer, such as the object that we have clicked on, if we have clicked with the left or right button, and so on. So now from this on pointer down void, we should be able to know which item we clicked on. So we can try debug.log. And we can access the game object from the event data that pointer current recast that game object. Now it is telling us that we are clicking on the slot, now on the icon, and so on. But we don't want the pointer to register the icon, we only want it to register the slot. Because how do we know if there is an item? We could do the recast on the icon itself, but it is better to ask the item slot if it is holding some item. And because we don't want the void on pointer down to register the icon, we'll need to go to the prefab of the item which we have created and select the background and the icon and tick off the raycast target. Just like that. Now it is registering only the slot even when you are clicking on the item, but it is also registering when you right click, which is not what we want. So in the on pointer down void, we need to ask if we are clicking with the left button. Then we will get the object that we have clicked on and try to get the inventory slot component. So 
So we are checking if we have clicked with the left button, then we are getting the clicked object, getting the slot component, and if there is some slot script, which means that it is slot, we can do some other stuff. I will create a game object variable, which will be for the dragged object, the object that we are currently dragging. So when we click on the slot and there is some item in it, we can set the dragged object to the held item of the slot and set the held item of the slot to null. And to make the movement of the item work, in the update we can just ask if the dragged object is not equal to null and then we can just move the dragged object to the position of the mouse. In this scene I will just add the inventory slot script to all of the slots. And if some of the slots is currently holding some item, don't forget to set it, otherwise you will not be able to pick it up. So now when I'm clicking to any of these slots, it is not doing anything, but when I click to the full slot, you can see that I have successfully picked up the hammer, but I can't do anything with it just yet. So we will have to edit the on pointer up void. We want to place the item to the slot only if there is some game object in the event data and the direct object is not equal to now. And at the same time, we want to make sure that we have clicked with the left button, so there is a lot of conditions. And then we will just check if there is the slot component on the object and if it is not holding any item. And when this is true, we can just set the direct object to now. But before that, we want to set the held item of the slot to the direct object. And for this, we can use our void which we have created on the slot so that we don't have to be setting the position of the item. Now we should be able to pick the item up, place it somewhere else. Yeah, this is working just fine. But when I take the hammer and try to place it to the club, you can see that it is broken because we have no condition for that. So else if there is the slot, but it is currently holding some item, we want to put the direct object back to its last slot. So else if there is some slot, but it is currently holding some item, we want to set the direct object back to the last slot. For this, we'll need to define a new game object variable, last item slot. We'll set this variable when we are picking up some item, so right here. So then, when there is already some item, we'll again set the direct object to now. But before that, we'll set the held item of the last slot to the direct object. So I'm still able to pick up the items, but when I try to put the hammer over the band, you can see that it gets back to its last item slot. But there is other way how you can do it, which is by switching the items, which I think is better. For this, we need to set the held item of the last item slot to the new item, which you will get from the slot. And we need to set the held item of the new slot to the direct object. So it is simple as that. And now you can see that we are able to switch the items. And this would obviously work even if you would have the whole inventory full, you could still move the items around, switch them and so on. There are still definitely some bugs and features that we would want to implement. So in next video we will implement the hotbar, make it so that we can throw the items away, pick them up and also make these stackable items. I hope that this video was helpful, if you have any questions drop them down to the comments, don't forget to like, subscribe and I will see you in next videos. Bye!